ways that the screensavers has influenced the Star Wars universe. <laughs> Number five is the Jedi robes. You know that the utility kilt that you've been wearing for like the last 25 years actually yeah. influenced the costume decision making. <laughs> Lucas, and before Patrick started wearing this kilt, Lucas thought that, that Alec Guinness kind of looked a little girly. Right. But then we showed him the results of our uh, extensive kilt focus group, and Lucas came around. Really? Yeah. I did not know that. He came. Number four is Kenny Baker reprising his role as R2D2. Now, back in August of 2000, Lucas considered replacing the much loved Baker with a computer generated R2D2. Ah. In episode two, thanks to all those screensavers viewers who expressed their outrage in our poll, should Lucas have killed Kenny, Lucas changed his mind. Look at that. Now Ladies that will. And gentlemen. Now some will tell you that that whole Kenny business was a rumor, and Lucas never intended to computerize R2D2. But those are the same people who would doubt that Kate Patello wore her hair inside buns way before Carrie Fisher did. Which brings me to number three. As well, it there should. she is. Here's Kate is seen in a screensavers episode from 1978. She's not okay. wearing the full danishes, though. <laughs> she was wearing her hair like this for at least a year before the first Star Wars appeared in theaters. I mean, they had to change a little, otherwise everybody would have known. Yeah, they got that from the screensavers. When I, she was asked if this, was, if this bothered her, Ms. Batello said that she didn't mind as long as she was offered the role of Leia in the upcoming Broadway musical. Wow. <laughs> Number two. Number two. Leo's kiss makeup phase. Now, only true Leo fans know of, of Mr. Laporte's huge fascination with the band Kiss. As you can see here, the makeup Leo wore in the late 70s was a direct influence on the character of Darth Maul. Now, if you don't believe me, if you think that's photoshopped, I brought this picture I cut out from Leo's yearbook in 1978. There he is again. I mean, and this is real paper. You gotta believe this. Therefore, it can't be photoshopped. Yes, can't be photoshopped. Number one, and here's the thing about number one. We still need your help to make this happen. Two weeks ago, we reported that the band NSYNC would be appearing in episode two, Attack of the Clones. Ah! I know, travesty. Then last week, we heard that because of the legions of outraged screensavers viewers, NSYNC would end up on the cutting room floor. And now we hear that that was just a rumor that NSYNC may still appear in the film after these results. Can you believe that? Now, I want you to protest this immediately. Go post a message about why you think NSYNC should end up on Lucas's cutting room floor. And I'll forward all of those messages to Lucasfilm. I think we should just drive up there, ladies and gentlemen. Sledgehammers in hand to Marin County and talk to the man. Do as the girl says. Fight for your right to not see NSYNC on the big screen. You can leave your message in the talkback section of Megan's story at thescreensavers.com. By the way, I said you could call me a girl. Yeah. Okay, thank you. Yeah, actually. I wrote that. Would you say that again? Yeah. Loudly? I, I wrote that. It was her idea to say girl. Folks, stay where you are. <laughs> Still to come on this very show. You anger with your computer. Cat's going to help you learn how to destroy it. Maybe Rich will show us how to shape up with flash animation. Plus, what are the pros and cons of Fat32 versus NTFS? We're going to show you all that and more, folks, as the screensavers rolls on.